Welcome to the review of the Panasonic DDX200. It's the first 4K camcorder with a large sensor and a fixed lens. So once again we've got um, Alan McLaughlin here. Now he's used to using um, broadcast cameras but he's actually thinking of buying this camera. Um, so Alan, what's your first thoughts? I mean, I've not really shown you around the camera but um, What's your feelings? Uh, I quite like it. It's got a lovely eyepiece, a nice OLED eyepiece. It's very detailed, which is great. I've had problems with previous cameras where you can't see the screen in daylight. I assume this will be the same, and the eyepiece isn't that good. But this is a really nice eyepiece. I could work with that all day, I think. Yeah. The zoom is very smooth, very touch sensitive, probably the, the most touch sensitive zoom of this kind of camera I've, I've seen for a, for a long, long time, anyway. Uh, lots of good features, certainly all the the necessary things you would want a running gun camera, you know, the built-in the built lens. Fairly decent uh, zoom range, not as tight as I would like it to be, but, you know, we can talk about that in terms of uh, post-production and 4K and cropping in, obviously, which you couldn't do in SD or HD, really. Uh, everything in the one piece, as I say, you know, we've got the XLR inputs, all the audio uh, switchery that we need, and uh, some very uh, high bit rates as well, which I think is the big selling point, particularly not so much in 4K. We know what 4K can do now, obviously, but... It's good to have a camera in this price range with all those features that can do good HD as well. Obviously, HD is still a big part of the, the business that we work in. And uh, as much as we like having 4K now and the way that's going ahead, there's still a long way to go for HD. So this camera, if it didn't have 4K, it would still be a great HD camera. Uh, Pluggery wise SDI out is absolutely brilliant, you know. If you want to work for satellite vans and things like that, you know, do a bit of ENG, you've got to have that. The, the one thing that I do know from experience is that some cameras, um, although they've got the SDI out, don't give you SD, but this camera gives you SD all the way up to 4K. Yeah, well, that's excellent as well. I mean, uh, certainly be scenarios I can see where we would want it. Still want an SD output, going into a vision mixer or into a console. If you want to do a multi-camera shoot, we say four of these, and it's there, you know, in SD, HD and... 4K, obviously. So I think this will prove very popular with the running gun ENG type guys, you know, as well as the documentary makers. And I think having seen the limited amount of picture footage that I've seen coming out of Japan and places like that, it looks like it will be it'll be good for some nice corporate stuff. Maybe the nice little you know drama and things like that as well. What about package. the 13 times lens? How does that grab you? I'm not that impressed with the zoom range, to be honest. Uh, the width is quite nice. The wide, the wide end, the 28 mil equivalent, is quite nice. I would like it to go a bit further. Now, the other thing it does, um, which might be useful for the drama boys, is uh, vlog. Yeah. Well, vlog isn't something I do an awful lot of personally, but I know a lot of editors who swear by it, you know, and they want everything shot that way. So that's another option that you have with this camera. You can do your baked in look, whatever that happens to be, you know, the way you like it, or you can offer a vlog for, for post production and grading. So I think that's brilliant, actually. And again, that is going to be a major selling point for this camera. Definitely the way forward, 4K. I've, I've discovered, especially with reframing, it's uh, what a difference it makes to, yeah. to the way you think about a, a shot. Yeah, well, it does change the way you post-produce, I suppose. If you are used to, you know, having your frame, your HD frame or your SD frame, and that's all you've got, then, you know, the sudden ability to be able to crop in is very useful. It gives you a second camera almost, doesn't it? Yeah. events coverage things like that you know you've got your wide shot you've got your mid shot you've got whatever shot you want really i suppose so yeah i mean that's not something i've done anything of anything with so far but yeah certainly something that will be useful
So, what's your, what's your thoughts on that shallow depth of field? Do you have a wee peek at there? It's very nice. Uh, very cinematic looking, you know, with the uh, shallow bokeh, as it's known. Yeah, yeah, that'd be very useful for that, uh, you know, sort of drama type shoot, you know, on a budget, but in high quality 4K, I think it's going to be very popular. You can uh, refer to my shots here of Japanese tourists, so in and out of focus. Yeah, I mean, it's not overstated, it's not like a full, a full size, you know, a DSLR for controlling the depth of field is quite difficult, you know, so in a running gun situation, you don't want too deep a depth of focus, or too shallow a depth of field, I should say. You want it to be manageable, I think, and that's very manageable, you know, while still giving you that nice uh, effect. One of the features of the Panasonic DVX200 is 4K. Now that's 4K 150 megabits a second at 50p. You really can't get any better than that. And what's that recording on to? XD XC cards. Speed 3, class 10. They go straight onto the Final Cut timeline and no rendering as long as obviously you've picked 4K on the timeline. There's a couple of effects that the camera can do. Now obviously taken from the DSLRs, you've got interval time record and slow motion. Now the one thing about slow motion is up to 75 frames a second, everything's great. But as soon as you go beyond that up to 120 frames per second, it starts to crop and the image looks rather uh, grotty. And uh, I wouldn't advise going up to 120 frames a second. Well, what's your thoughts on the, the outputs here? Uh, plenty of options on the outputs. SDI out, very, very useful. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you were working in an ENG capacity into a satellite van, it's a great one, one cable solution, if you like, for uh, pictures and audio. Uh, time code in and out, very useful as well. Uh, especially if you're working in a multi-camera type uh, environment. Maybe you want to do a shoot with two of these or three or four of these. It's useful to sync up the time codes. Uh, that's a, that's a, a very sort of professional feature that you don't see in a lot of this type of camera. So it's great to have that. Video output, composite output, still some uses for that. We occasionally do satellite van work where it's uh, an SD upload, an SD satellite link. So uh, if you can't get the picture down, if you can't get an SD signal down the SDI, then you've certainly got that option as video out. And there's still some, uh, you know, some requirement for uh, SD output into vision mixers and desks and stuff so all the options are covered there you've also got this audio out jack which uh, i presume pres uh, provides a line out of the camera which is quite useful for uh, working sound guys you know when they're working with a confidence feed from the camera back into their mixer so they know it's coming out and going in and being recorded properly so yeah lots of good features there's also an hdmi on the back here which i do believe will output 422 10-bit if you're uh, using a third-party recorder, so plenty of options here. 
What are your options? Somebody's going to ask, where is the headphone jack? Where is the headphone jack? Well, headphone jack, if you close this one and open this little top door, headphone jack right there. And what about the XLRs? What's your thoughts on that? It's always good to see two XLRs on a camera, you know, from the point of view of connecting, let's say, to a sound desk. If you're doing a music recording or a, to a mixer, if you're working with a guy with a mixer, a sound guy, it's interesting that there's one at the back, one at the front, some you don't see all that often. But it's nice to have, I think it is quite nice to have the separation. Obviously, you can still connect two feeds there if you're working from, with a mixer, but it's quite good to have that front mic option. We can just stick on your front mic and you're not running cable right across the camera and stuff. Uh, also, you know, with the rear option, if you wanted to connect that mixer, you're not running cable all over the camera as such. We're just about to get into Lust Parish Church and there's never a better place for low light readings because it's one of the darkest wee churches I've ever filmed in. So this is a, a very old Scottish church and in keeping with the status, the lighting is it's actually lovely but it's uh, a wee bit on the dark side for most video cameras. We're going to get a couple of shots in here and this will test the metal of the DVX 200 as far as low light's concerned. So we're just filming at 9 dBs at the moment and uh, what was your thoughts, Alan? It looks pretty good at 9 dB, uh, even at zero in here, which, you know, as we've already said, it's pretty dark. It looks usable, you know, yes. and natural. Well, what I'll do is if I stand just over there, possibly where the minister would be, yeah. you could see, see, see what your thoughts are. <clears throat> so, what, what are we using, Alan? Is it nine or what? Nine. I'm going to flick it. I've got you in an MCU. I'm going to flick it down to six. Right, so okay. You'll, so you'll see the change. Flick it down to six. Okay, I'm down to six here. That's still a pretty good picture. And then I'm going to flick it down to zero. So we're going to give you three shots here. We're going to give you zero, six, and nine. And uh, now, we'll see what it's like uh, when you get back to base. Zero's, zero's a wee bit dingy, I would say. Right, so zero's a bit. You right, so you wouldn't use zero, so you're probably looking at six dBs. It's minimum six in here. Uh, obviously, we're zoomed in quite tight, so that's right. going to stop it down a bit anyway. So okay. if, out, if I crack out wide on zero, that's a lot better. It's usable, I would say. It's very natural looking. Right, so well, what, 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 what dB is that? Zero. Z oh, zero, right. Yeah. Oh, gosh. So I'll give you some six on this wider shot. I think six looks fantastic, actually. Right, six, right, okay. Six and nine is pretty good as well, but obviously it's a wee bit more. So I don't know what the noise is going to be like. Yeah. Relax, etc. But uh, okay. maybe this uh, scene the file setting is the one to use, as you say, it's less noisy than the... And how is it width-wise? What, what are you picking up wide-wise in this 4K, remember? The altar. The altar? Oh, whatever that is, sorry. Right across to just, oh, right. well, just that's actually not bad, is it? Just, just cutting out the baptism. Yeah. So this is UHD 50p, and uh, even if I take this down to 25p, it actually makes a difference to the crop. I mean, I'll just show you. So there you go, that's 25p, and it's slightly different again. So what is vlog all about? Well basically what you do is you set the camera to vlog and your pictures start to look wishy-washy, in other words kind of grey looking. But once you get it back to base you can put it into your NLE and you've got they reckon about 12 stops of dynamic range. In other words you can choose what is going to actually be um, exposed. In other words in my case it would be the flesh tones.
So that's Vlog. Now, the camera has quite a clever facility in that it doesn't have any MLATs, but what you do have is what's called Vlog Assist, and you can assign that to one of the buttons, and in this case, it's button two. I'll just show you. The other thing about Vlog Assist is it only works in preview mode. Once you're in record, you can't use it, it's invalid. My name's Paul Roddy, um, I've run a scooter magazine for years but we're now um, associated with the Scottish scooter scene where we run a Facebook page for everyone to advertise all the, the scooter rallies and things like that. We, we run our own rally in Millport um, which is one of the biggest in Scotland now so all the scooters come from all over Britain. So, and this today is mainly for its all Teenage Cancer Trust, um, part of the Bod Weekend, the LNP run. Um, we are now doing the Saturday afternoon where we've got all the ride out for charity. So everything that you see is going on today, the bands, everything is all for charity today. The, the problem with Baisley is the number of traffic lights, so try to get this number of scooters round is the hard bit, so we, we just tried to manage a route that was low on traffic lights and high on journey, so, but we managed to, can, Barry here was the expert uh, at controlling really the traffic expert. as well, uh, so. Uh -huh. So I saw you, did you not stop and you were kind of looking after uh, everybody? I was kind of looking after everybody, kind of stopping the traffic and stuff, so I, I worked out well, worked out well when everybody was good for doing that way with us. So there we have it, that is the Panasonic DVX200 4K camcorder. What's not to like about the camera? It's got 4K, 150 megabits a second, 50p. It, the, the fixed lens, in my opinion, is what Panasonic needed for this camera. Everybody is bringing out cameras that you need to swap lenses. And can I tell you from somebody who uses such a camera, it can be actually a pain in the backside to keep swapping lenses all the time. So it's nice to see that Panasonic have had, had to think different. Panasonic have had a ghost when it comes to um, large sensor cameras with the AF-101 doing so well. Everybody wanted a 4K AF-101, but Panasonic decided to sit back, watch what was happening and bring out a camera that in my opinion is going to sell well. I think it's a great camera and for running gun, you can't do any better.
Yeah. Okay.